And then this little thing is a very handy tool. Um, <clears throat> it's a feature called ducking. So you can set whether a track is ducked or not. They've, they added this in GarageBand 3. I use it all the time. It's very handy. So the way this works, um, if I scroll to the beginning of my document, right here in this track, um, this is the intro for my podcast. And what I have open here is Techno Fodder Episode 5. And uh, so right here is the, is the intro sound, the whole ready, aim, fire, that kind of thing. And you can see I've got the down arrow, the blue thing, checked. So what that means is that this track is ducked. And if you go up to Big O's voice, it's got up arrow. So that means that the Big O's voice track is the dominant track. And uh, this track that has my intro is, I don't know, you call it subdominant or submissive or whatever you want to call it. It's not the dominant, dominant track, but ducking is turned on. So what will happen is if this is playing and I'm, all, and I'm recording on this track, um, the volume will automatically be adjusted on the intro track down so that you can hear my my voice when i'm talking so what you can do you set a background music to to just play on this track down here and then you set this one and you just start talking and when you talk it automatically turns the volume down on this track so that you can hear you so that you can hear yourself and it manages it for you so that you uh you don't have to worry about sliding the volume up and down in strategic places it's really very handy i suggest you play with it easy to use all you if you want to turn it off you don't like it just click the button until there's nothing nothing highlighted and then it's off that simple and if if you find out that um the track that's being ducked down isn't quite far enough quiet for you then just uh, use the volume track and slide it a little bit more quiet and then you'll be fine. All right, so getting back to this track volume, you click this little arrow to show or hide the volume for the track. Um, let's say that in my intro track, I wanted um, a certain part of it to be a little bit more quiet. What you do, you click here to set a, a point in time and you can click over here and then you just drag it to change the volume. So this is selective um, selective volume changing, right? So you've got the normal uh, level of volume right here, and then I've just set it so that the volume will fade down to, to nothing right here. And let's say I want this to be quiet for a little bit and then come back and be louder than it was before. You just click to create another spot, click again here, drag it up, and now it'll be way loud. It's that simple. And uh, if you don't like any of them, you can click on the spot to highlight it, hit the delete key, and it goes away. And um, even after you've created them, you can you can grab a hold of them, move them around, do whatever, so you can control the volume. Once you've done that, and this is an important caveat, once you have manually changed the volume like that, it ghosts out the the uh, the pan and the volume track buttons, so you can no longer control those by hand. And the reason why the volume and the pan is ghosted out it's because over here where it says track volume you can also change it to control the panning so if you want this part of the audio to pan all the way to the right and then right here you want it to pan all the way to the left you can control it like that so you can have one track panning left and right uh, and so then you can switch back over to the volume and change it so the volume corresponds or however you want to do it so that's why those these two things get ghosted out. So there's no way to reverse that effect. Even if you delete all of these uh, spots, these will still be ghosted out. So that's important to remember. And uh, make sure you get those the way that you want them before you start manually messing with it. If you get stuck and you realize, I really need to change the overall volume, what you can do is make a new track and then just grab the audio in your track and drag it down into into a new track and uh, that way you can you can get around that and start over all right so that's that covers everything in the section of the tracks now let's look down here down at the bottom left not the very bottom just above that it's a little slider ball called slider bar called the zoom level so if all the way to the left is zoomed the farthest out so you can see up here at the top, you've got this timeline. So that's uh, 
counting in seconds zero that's 30 seconds that's a minute and it's only about an inch for 30 seconds and that is controlled by the zoom level so if you zoom all the way out you see this is down to hundreds of a second so it's uh, really far in so you want to do this so say you've got um, you've got these audio clips that you've recorded you want to do rearranging you're going to want to zoom out so you can grab an individual track and slide it exactly where you want it to go and then if you want to do in uh, close-up audio editing uh, like cutting out ums or dead air then you want to zoom all the way in so that you can look at the details of of a, a particular audio track so that's very handy now uh, so coming down here you've got got the button starting from the left to the right the big plus button that just creates a new track and uh, we'll cover that in a minute and this little guy is the loop browser and there is a lot of stuff to be said about this loop browser and I'll come back to that this is the track editor and I'll show that to you briefly here you click on that and it brings you up, brings up um, more details about a given track so let's highlight Big O's voice highlight a piece of audio here make sure we've uh, let's see actually let's let's go to the Bennett track which is where I've got my intro so um, so we've rewound here all the way to the beginning and you go down here and the the quick way to open this is double click like if you've got uh, one that you want to open just double click and it will automatically open up the screen so here is an even closer view of the wave waveform of the audio that I've recorded there and you can do individual edits like grabbing just that section of audio and and uh, deleting it or, or what have you and I just deleted that by hitting Apple X for cut um, so again here is where you, you can manually change the change the name and uh, I'm gonna go back to um, to looking at let's see let's zoom back out and we'll put the play marker here to Big O's voice um, all right so we've got this this thing here for region pitch um, this is only enabled for MIDI tracks and there's a lot of uh, MIDI tracks built into the loop browser which I'll show you in a second um, but you can control the, the the pitch selectively there for individual notes and that kind of thing uh, and again this follow tempo and pitch is for MIDI stuff and that's uh, out of scope for this discussion tuning is helpful you can do this on waveform uh, files so say you're singing and you're a little bit off key you can turn up the uh, tuning to try to automatically uh, adjust the pitch of your voice um, and limit to key is if uh, is just you know when you've when you've set up in a track what key the whole song is you can try to keep the, the automatic tuning within the confines of the key signature that you have have enabled not something that podcasters use very much and enable timing this will try to change the rhythm of your voice to uh, correspond with the beats per measure that you have set for the song again this is a musician thing not a podcasting thing and the last thing to note here is that uh, <coughs> the details of, of this track part has um, its own zoom slider bar so you can zoom way way in uh, for editing um, voice so you can get really fine fine grain details there I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next part when we continue our discussion of the interface so stay tuned for that and if you want to make sure that you get these tutorials as they become available make sure you subscribe to my podcast feed at technofodder.com thanks a lot folks and I'll see you next time